All right, welcome everybody to the second talk of the day. I'm uh, very happy to this time announce the French breweries talk. France is the partner country of Bar Convent 2017. And uh, I would say that French beer in Germany and maybe also in the rest of the world is not particularly well known or well esteemed. Um, usually we associate France with a wine country and uh, of course French wines are excellent, French cuisine is excellent, but the beers are usually, we just don't care about French beers. Now we thought with this opportunity as France as a partner country, we want to shine a new light on French beer, on French craft beer as well, but also the traditional side. And uh, I've invited uh, three people from the beer business in France. Um, the first one is from a very traditional brewery, uh, Brasserie Duc, um, and uh, probably best known for their brand Jean Lain. And I would like to ask on stage Mathieu, who is uh, the heir, right, of the brewery. Thanks for coming. Pick any spot. <laughs> and uh, because his English is not uh, so good, um, we also have uh, Jean René, <laughs> who is uh, going to act as interpreter. And uh, um, yeah, please take a seat. And as uh, representatives of uh, the young and upcoming craft beer scene in France, um, I would like to ask Outland Brewery on stage. <laughs> Welcome. And uh, Bureaucratie. <laughs> Welcome. We're going to do a short introduction round very soon, so you can talk about yourselves a bit. And because uh, there's not only one wine country that is also inter inter interested in beer, um, I thought it'd be nice to have an outside perspective from another wine country, in this case Italy. So, Alfonso from Biraba and Beer and Food in Rome. All right, thank you guys for coming. Um, we're now going to grab the microphone, start over here and uh, go for the introduction round. Um, just talk about yourselves and uh, what you're doing in the beer business, um, about your breweries or projects. And uh, while you do that, I'm gonna get us some beer. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Sorry for my English. I've got my uh, traductor. Um, I'm uh, the fifth generation of brewer in the brewery Dwick in uh, Jeanlin, it's a small town village in the north of France, and we are brewer from father to son. Um, we, the brewery is here since uh, 1922, sure. and uh, we are almost famous in uh, several countries because we are making beer de garde. So it's uh, beer is uh, keeping in uh, in tank. Uh, before uh, filling in bottles or, or kegs. Hello, I'm Julien, Julien Tisserand from from uh, Les Trois Huit Outland. In fact, we I opened uh, one of uh, I would say first craft beer bar in Paris. Uh, it's a really small bistro, serving eight craft beer. Really craft from France uh, in 2013 and uh, just opened one year ago in collaboration with the uh, Outland Brewery, the Outland Bar, which is the tap room of the brewery, uh, I would say American style tap room. And uh, I'm representing also the brewery, Outland which is a small brewery, which is in uh, Fontenay-sous-Bois, not so far from Paris. Really small brewery, making 1,000 hectolitre per year. So really small compared to, to Mathieu, <laughs> which is making really more. And we are like uh, in the new trend, in the new craft beer trend, in international craft beer trend. So, uh, and Pierre? Thanks, uh, Julien. Uh, hi, everyone. I, I'm Pierre from Bureaucracy. Um, I own a beer shop with my wife. We opened that uh, four years ago. Uh, we opened it to, to show uh, the, the neighborhood that we can 
have lots of nice beers in France. And we are home brewers as well. So we, I mean, after having this bottle shop open, we decided to know even more about what beer is. So we really wanted to, to make our own, our own beers and recipes and everything. And, uh, and yeah, we sell lots of French beers because there's lots of really nice craft beers in, in France. And it's a really real pleasure to be part of this, uh, this um, new wave, I'd say. And, uh, and as, as for Julien, we, are part of the, we have been part of the Paris Beer Week community. So we organized the, the Paris Beer Week festival that happens every year for four years now. And yeah, it's a big thing for us. And, uh, and thanks for coming and everything. So <laughs> now I'll pass my turn. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Alfonso from Italy, and uh, I'm one of the partners of uh, Beer and Food in Rome, Trastevere, and uh, Beer Bar here in Berlin. And uh, the, our work is focused on uh, uh, Italian craft beer, but not only Italian craft beer, also international, from Europe and uh, all over the world. So, time for our first beer, or at least my first beer of the day. Um, so, what's, uh, what do we have in our glasses now? Which one is it? So, so I suppose you should uh, grab the mic and tell us a bit about this beer. Um, obviously, we're doing a tasting on the side, so the audience gets to taste the beers as well. Here they come. <laughs> yes, so this is a, the f original beer of the brewery Outland called Tasty Pale Ale. And uh, the brewery has been created in 2011 by Jan, Jan Jeffrio, which w who was a home brewer and a home brewer in the United States. And his friend who is a guy called now Tasty, That's, um, his real name is Mike McDowell from the Brewing Network. Uh, in, uh, it's a radio, it's a beer geek radio in the US with a, quite a lot of influence now. And they just created a sessionable beer, means a beer that you can drink uh, all night long. I mean, I mean, it's not night, it can be a day, but it's really low alcohol beer. Um, and they wanted to put a lot of hops, but to put a lot of hops needs to have a body for that. So they decided just to leave a little bit of sweetness, of sugar. So. Um, which is not really normal normally in beers. You want a, you want a beer like doesn't have sugar anymore, but this one is really 3.5 uh, degree alcohol with a bit of sweetness, a lot of hoppy taste, and it's mainly citra. At, the, at this time, in beginning of 2010, were the experimental uh, hops. And uh, so now it's the main, it's main beer in the brewery. We, we, uh, we produce 40% uh, of this beer in tank and we, tr we want to invest for a bigger tank now in the brewery next year to uh, have this beer in, in other places and mainly in cakes, in bars in Paris and in France and maybe somewhere else in the world. Right. Um, my first question to you would be going back into the history of beer in France. Um, because that, I think, is the greatest point of ignorance outside of France. Um, how does the history of brewing in France look like? Do you have traditional beers? Um, we should so yeah. I will give the micro, micro to, to Mathieu <laughs> for that. Uh, because I have like, a, for me, there are different drinkers, beer drinkers now in France. There are like five. And one of those are traditional, regional beer and maybe Nordic, I would say, f beer from the north are uh, something that I don't really know. I'm Alsatian, so I'm from Alsace, and I know also, uh, I know also a, a tradition of drinking beer, but Mathieu, just speak about traditional. Uh... I'm the old guy here. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the history of the, of the brewery and beer in France is really old. Um, but mainly in, uh, in uh, several countries, um, beer was a blonde, blonde layer type and uh, since, uh, since a while. And now, um, my, my old grandfather start with the uh, amber beer. He was the first one to try to do something, and uh, with other guy, but um, to try to do uh, some other beer, specialty beer. And in the north of France, uh, at the beginning of the, the past century, there were around 2,000 uh, brewery in the north of France in a small area. So north of France and Alsace, east of France are really a um, land of, uh, of brewery. Um, after the first war and the second war, a lot of brewery uh, disappeared because uh, uh, they were destroying. Or, uh, and, and after that, there is a lot of concentration from the big industry of beer. Uh, you know InBev now and uh, Heineken and... Uh, uh, which, which ones are the major brands of beer in, uh, in France? The major brand? Yeah, like the in industrial lagers. Sorry? No, it, that's Cronenbourg. Cron yeah, Carlsberg, uh, Carlsberg Group. Uh, uh, Lef from uh, InBev, uh, Heineken as well. Uh, that's the mainstream of the beer. Uh, Always and still, unfortunately, but it's still the, the main uh, uh, the, 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 the consumption of beer uh, from the... say is that uh, in the uh, let's say post World War II there was this high concentration with industrial brands with industrial breweries that we all know and that uh, more recently I mean around this period of time as uh, Matthew said most of the smaller northern but also eastern or Brittany uh, brewery disappeared because the, 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 the consumption was really for you know lighter more modern more fresh more entertainment type of uh, you know consumption and uh, in the last, uh, let's say, what, 20 years, we can say, there is a, this uh, rebirth of uh, what is now defined as craft that we call artisanal, uh, which is smaller operation. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> there are a few exceptions to this, the, the, the previous disappearance, which is uh, the Duic Brasserie, which remains probably among the, what, top 15, 20, uh, Now, in the north of France, so the region which goes from, let's say, uh, 100 kilometers north of Paris to the Belgian, the Belgian border, there is today only four out of the 2,000 breweries that were there 100 years ago that are still alive. And Duic is one of them. So most of the other breweries are either extremely, uh, you know, small and new, but the traditional independent craft breweries have all disappeared. So, what, so it's a bit complex to explain. It's just you said we had that for many, many years. It totally disappeared 30, 40 years ago, and now it's back on, and it's extremely, uh, very, extremely strong, very alive. And uh, I guess we have, our, you know, maybe not hundreds, but uh, quite a few that are, you know, emerging every year now in France. The, the guy is gone, so I guess we need to cut. Uh, it's like I'm going to give you the micro, Pierre, to, 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 to have, I see, uh, maybe. It's because it's about the independent brewery. It's something that it's important for us. Uh, when we create the Paris, the Paris Beer Week, well, one of the reasons of the, this association, this uh, festival, was to get independent breweries. And it's interesting to see how some historical breweries in France that I don't really know so much are still independent, means that they are not owned by the three big companies in, in, in the world, 
Charles Abinbev, Carlsberg, and uh, Heineken, if I remember. Maybe there are four Asabe Miller, but they are being bought by uh, Abinbev. So it's something that we can like join. I mean, the topping is just like a, a, the same for us, you know, the same for us in this kind, kind of, uh, of uh, discussion, you know. And Pierre, you were organizing also the Paris Berwick, and you are also serving at, in your, in your uh, shop only independent breweries. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thanks, Julien, for, uh, for telling that. Uh, I just wanted to, to add something about the traditional styles in France. The thing is, I think lots of people don't even know that it exists. Uh, when they get into a cafe to order a beer, they just ask for a beer. Like, a beer. That's and they expect it. some uh, they, golden pilsner lager type. They, yeah, exactly. That, that would be either Heineken or Kronenburg, uh, depending on the distributor. But uh, they just ask for a beer. They don't really care, I guess. Uh, but it's definitely changing right now. And when they want more special beers, and I say special with big ish, uh, they ask for a blonde ambre or brune, uh, which is blonde uh, amber or brown. I mean, they, there's no really style behind it. Uh, they just ask for color. And uh, yeah, so they don't really know beer. Uh, they've been drinking it for ages. Uh, they've been enjoying it, uh, but they, they definitely don't uh, uh, they don't know what they are, in, what's in their glasses, uh, I guess. So, uh, I'd say style in France uh, depends on where you come from. Uh, what, what uh, if you're just a, anyone, uh, or if you're into the business, or if you're for a, for a foreign country, that would you, you would know about this uh, Pierre de Garde and Saison that are really uh, traditional French beers. Uh, and, uh, and now now that there's a new wave, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of brewers are just making their own style and just inventing new stuff. Uh, it's definitely not tra traditional anymore, but, uh, but it is French, just because it's been brewed in France, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, that's just what I wanted to, to add. How about Italy? Do we have a uh, recognizable brewing history in Italy? Or iconic uh, Italian beer styles? Uh, yeah, the, um, the history of, yeah, of the Italian microbreweries yeah, is uh, it's short. Because uh, yeah, the first microbreweries in Italy start, uh, oh, the, the microbreweries we, we know uh, starts in uh, 1996. And there was uh, there were Baladen, uh, Lambrate, our partner in Birra, and uh, Birrificio Italiano, who is, uh, which is a, a brewery that uh, is inspired to the German styles. Uh, and yeah, I think as in France, we have the the same uh, the same difficulties to. To sell craft beer, yeah, because a lot of people uh, enter in your bar and ask, uh, "Give me, just give me a beer." Which beer? Blonde. Uh, maybe you must have time to explain that you can have a sweet beer, a dark beer, and uh, a, um, a bitter beer, hoppy beer, and at the moment. Uh, I think uh, we are lucky because, uh, especially in, in our bar in Rome, we are 30, beer, 30 beers on taps. And so uh, you, can satisfy, you can satisfy all the people. Often uh, you have to give them taste. And but it, it's, it's, a, it's an hard work. It's an hard work to sell uh, craft beer. Um, would you say that before the advent of craft beer that there was something like an iconic uh, Italian beer style such as Bière de Garde in France? Uh, it's okay to say no. No, I, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think the first uh, Italian typical styles uh, like uh, chestnut ale 
are at the beginning started to exist at the beginning of uh, the, the, the 21st century. Okay. Yeah, are really young. So would you say that uh, the the fact that both of your countries are predominantly wine countries is that a challenge for craft beer or traditional beer or is it a chance? Mm. Uh, or both? 50-50. <laughs> uh, yeah, because uh, it's a challenge because uh, craft beer is expensive. And uh, a lot of people who doesn't matter about the quality, they say, oh, I have a, a bottle of wine uh, for five euro at the supermarket, but maybe you drink that wine and you have a bad headache the day after. Uh, and yeah, it could also be a chance because a lot of people uh, that knows is tired to drink bad wine, so maybe they, uh, is, uh, it's easier to find a place uh, in which you can drink uh, good beer without spend too much that uh, a place uh, in which you 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 go maybe a, a famous restaurant you go to drink wine and uh, you spend a lot of money for a good bottle so it's 50 50. Well, my colleague uh, Peter Eichhorn who also moderates on stage um, has a saying that uh, craft beer made it possible to be a cheap snob it was never so cheap to be a snob as with craft beer, because it's still sort of affordable. Yeah, and for, uh, for, for France, I'd say that uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, people are into wine, definitely. And, they, and even, I think, they, they think they know wine, uh, but they try to, definitely. I mean. When they give you, when you you give someone a really really nice bottle of wine, they they don't see the difference. Uh, but connoisseur, as they say, uh, they have taste. So once they you introduce them to beer, they can really see why this beer is really interesting, why these flavors and why those uh, textures and everything. I mean, it's really a matter of being um, interested. So. At first, they'd say, yeah, you know, beer is just for having fun, uh, having a laugh and having one sip in, uh, at the bar. Uh, but then they realize that there is something behind because you, you try it and I guess uh, in a bar it's even easier because you can make them taste lots of things. Julien, you would uh, agree or maybe not. Uh, <laughs> But then they just take a sip of every kind of beers you, you, you have, maybe a Berliner Weiss, uh, maybe, maybe an Imperial Stout, maybe a barley wine and everything. So they discover beer, they dif discover lots of a uh, wide range of tastes and flavors. Uh, and yeah, I think that's after that, they know that beers can be interested. So Junior can. Um, just a moment, I think uh, this beer again is uh, Outland. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's again Outland. I don't know why, but it's okay. Just, just say a few <laughs> words about the beer. So just to say about the, um, about the, the, the relationship, I mean, the, the beer in wine country. I define five uh, categories of uh, beer drinkers, and one of the categories is uh, uh, people who want to drink beer like wine. I mean, they want to make pairing, they want to integrate the beer in gastronomy. And uh, in fact, those um, this kind, these people, I mean, how to say, uh, this, this kind of drinkers are, are represented in France by different places, like, uh, for example, uh, the places that I know, La Finmousse Restaurant is a restaurant who doesn't have wine, but just pairing uh, beer with, uh, with the food, or you have also the Le Triangle. You have also a, a beer, a, 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 a beerologue, I don't know, a beer, I don't know, a beer expert called Elisabeth Pierre, who is trying to make pairing with cheese. So this is kind of... Uh, we actually call them sommeliers here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the, you have this sort of people are, are quite the dynamic just to have beer uh, like 
just to have like a beer drinker, I mean beer like wine in fact. And also have another category which I can have a transition with this beer which is like a, you had like bad beer, uh, lager beer from the bistro and uh, it's one of the drinkers but you have also when the people wanted to drink uh, uh, good beer, they wanted to drink Belgian beer in France. Belgium is like good beer. And here you have a Be Belgium style beer means it's more because we use the yeast, uh, Belgium yeast. But uh, as we are quite experimental at the brewery, we uh, add uh, a black tea from China, organic black tea from China, and Nelson Sauvin, Nelson Sauvin, which is um, a hop from New Zealand. So you have uh, this mix between this Belgium style beer that people like, and Belgium traditional beer, and a new new recipes that new brewer want to do, you know, and the experiment, experimental uh, way of doing that, which uh, is represented by the brewer, which is Jan. If you Mathieu. want to go on, on another subject, or I don't know. <laughs> do you see a challenge or a promise in the wine culture? Well, you know, to make it, uh, I'm not going to repeat what was said here, but uh, the point, you we, point of view we have is we think that uh, wine, the wine tradition, especially the way it evolved in France, is a uh, big luck for, for beer, I mean quality beer. Number one is because of the weight and the coming back of what we call aperitivo that we share a lot with the Italian, maybe they're even bigger than us. So um, drinking beer has its, uh, its an, a small outlet, you know, so it's a moment which is a bit you know, easy going and where you can share with people. So craft beer can easily be used there, and that it is taking over wine, which, uh, which actually was introduced as a, an aperitivo not so long ago by Americans, actually. Post-World War II, the French would not, before that, had wine for aperitivo. It was not traditional. So in some ways, that's, uh, that's an opportunity. And the second one, which we think is very important, is as expensive can a craft beer be? It's never as expensive as a, a good, very good wine. So with, uh, let's say, somewhere between 5 to 10 euros, you can buy something extraordinary that you can talk about, that you can discuss something with, uh, you know, with, whether it's with black tea or a specific method. You can really enjoy something which you will not be able to do with a bottle of wine. It's hard to, to brag about a, a, t a 10 euro bottle of wine. So we think there is a real market for the people interested in craft beer which is about, you know, taking over the wine. And, and what Mathieu adds, which is also very important, in France, in general, and in wine in particular, we, are, we tend to be a bit snobbish and tend to put a lot of weight on how much you know about what you drink. And wine becomes, has become, you know, through time extremely difficult, especially some areas like, for instance, uh, Burgundy, which is very difficult to know. Beer, as complex as you can make it, is never as complex as wine, is much more easy going. So along with the craft beer, um, I mean, reality as a, as a product, there is also a craft beer attitude, which is, which is far more open-minded and uh, less uh, status-oriented as wine. And that's also, we think, a very strong part of what, uh, what beer stands for today. Yeah. It's uh, something that I also experienced in Germany. I've had a discussion with a lady um, and I said, well, beer is a very complex drink. In, in many ways more complex than wine can be. And she said, no, that's not possible. Flat out, not possible. And I'm like, yes, it is. We have more ingredients in beer. And we're also allowed to add something like tea, um, which then makes the beer even more complex. So there is an amazing depth there. Um, although I personally don't see wine as a challenger to beer, it's more we're striving towards, well, maybe lifting beer to the same level. Maybe. I think the, the difference is you're coming from a country where not, beer is the norm. For us, the reference point is wine. And the complexity is not necessarily in wine, as you know about uh, the ingredients, but it's the complexity is about what is unique to France, is terroir. You know, this, this very complex division in land, which is probably the primary ingredient of what makes a wine very special. And this knowledge is very, very hard to access. And for a brewer, I suppose, getting terroir in the beer is not that easy. You can do it with the hops, but then there are only several hop-growing regions in the world. 
Maybe. No, yeah, uh, terroir is like something that we can maybe have in France, uh, in beer, I would say. It's like, uh, yes, with hops, sure. That's the new, uh, more and more uh, people are cultivating hops now, the new trend. Small uh, companies, really small, not, not enough for, for all the brewers in France. But I think the same is with, uh, with uh, uh, barley. Because sometimes I, we are tra at the brewery, we are like uh, ordering different barley from different companies just to try. And sometimes when you just get them at the brewery, you try them and you eat them and you can feel the more cereal and the color uh, that you have in, in different uh, barley. So I guess there is something also to do with good barley, organic barley, and uh, cultivated with different, um, uh, how to say, type of bar, uh, different old, uh, old, um, uh, old, uh, old uh, I don't know, ways. you can have like a... I would help you if I knew what you were you trying can to say. Old, uh, <laughs> the, Say it in French. doesn't have it in French, you know, but okay. anyway. <laughs> uh, so I guess you can have like this terroir uh, stuff in beer. I'm sure about it, you know. I, I, you know, we are not disputing that. Of course, we know that uh, ingredients can have terroir and it's true for spices, it's true for any ingredients. I think the, the big difference and what I was saying is, is uh, for even for the mainstream French, the knowledge of wine is extremely snobbish, difficult to access. And I was saying that craft beer spirit, as complex as it was, the spirit of people making craft was much more um, accessible and people were a bit more generous in the way they would approach it than uh, when you get into the, uh, you know, the wine scene. If you go, for, for, for instance, for, to a, an expensive French restaurant, you know, the, uh, the ceremony around the wine can be a, a, kind of a bit intimidating, it's, it's far less the case with beer. And I think that's probably something which uh, is not the only, the only opportunity, but one, some, one thing very special that craft beer brought to the, let's say this, uh, you know, high quality product that is uh, emerging in France. And speaking of high quality products, maybe Mathieu would like to talk about this beer. Okay. <laughs> I think you know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the first brewery of the brewery, the first one in 1922, my uh, old grandfather made this beer. Um, it's a humble beer, beer de garde. Um, and the one, well, maybe the first beer de garde, uh, who is still, uh, qui est toujours, uh, Qui est toujours vendu. Uh, why, why is it called well, Pierre de Garde? Well, well that's, uh, I mean, there's a bit of a legend, actually, when we started to work together, we did some research, and uh, actually we've learned it from um, some people around. It is said that uh, Mathieu's grandfather was the first one who has uh, created Pierre de Garde in the sense of keeping beer. Let me translate for it what it means. What we call Pierre de Garde in French is beer, not beer for keeping, as it is often translated in English, but it, meant, it means exactly beer kept, which means that the beer with it was kept for a certain amount of time, which is up to four weeks before it's released. Historically, in this region, as uh, I'm sure you all know, it's difficult to brew during summer, so they would brew in winter and, and keep the beer for the next uh, spring. And the beer at that time was mainly brewed because they were farms, they were like farmhouses, and they would, they, the, the beer was brewed for the workers, so they would keep it at first, you know, for, for technical reasons. Now, you're, you know, say Felix, Felix, so Felix Duick has, is often quoted as the one who the first, was the first who said that we are going to keep the beer, not because of the workers, not because of the brewing process, but, but because of the, the, the flavor that we want to give. So he's, in some ways, the first one to have put this, this method or this practice together but it's a, it's a current, it's a, it's a whole way of doing beer and, and, and then it also describes a flavor, a certain sort of um, 
style that uh, is actually in some ways more acknowledged in the US today than really in France. And it's the, it's the, it's the same type as what the Belgian calls saison, the French Southern Belgian called saison. Similar for same, same, same time. And so in, uh, from the general idea, it's a sort of similar also to a German yeah, Melzen, uh, well, which is well, also brewed in also, March. And if you think about it, it's very small, so similar region. But stronger, obviously. <laughs> No, I mean, it's not happy that the, the way, uh, you know, no, alcohol IPA, is stronger. Sorry? Alcohol is stronger. Uh, alcohol is stronger, right. But this is an old... Uh, but before it was not as so strong. That's what we were discussing. This, this one that we are drinking right now is uh, 7.8, right? 7.5. But apparently the, uh, the, 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 the first version before was a bit less in alcohol. But they were always above 6. Much, huh? Okay, next uh, I would like you to think about uh, something that is unique to the, to the French beer culture in terms of either the way that uh, people consume beer, so where they consume it, how they consume it, um, the way that beer is communicated, for example in the media, or the way that beer is distributed. You as shop owners probably can say something about that. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can try to, to, to talk about it. Uh, the way beers are consumed are definitely more in, into bars, actually. Uh, cafes are right after work. The ju yeah. People just want to chill, have a nice time with friends and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, they don't really care, as I said earlier. Merci. Thank you, So they don't really care about the beer that they're going to drink. They just want to have a nice moment. And they just want to, to, to grab something fizzy and some alcohol, maybe, just to relax. Um, <clears throat> the way the media talks about it, uh, well, it's beginning to change a bit. They, they're discovering that uh, new, new things are, are happening right now. Uh, it seems like, uh, but, but they sometimes they're, they're a bit confused. Uh, they don't really know what they're talking about because they're mixing everything, and some some bigger uh, industrial beers are, are doing some events at the same time as Paris Beer Week, for example. So they, they, they're like, hey, so maybe it's the same thing, actually. I don't know. Uh, so they're mixing everything, and they don't know really. That, but I think it's thanks to the cocktail. Uh, Julien could talk about it. Uh, the cocktail uh, uh, place and uh, new wave as well. Uh, that are introducing beers right now, uh, as you have the, the, the t a talk earlier, right before this one. Uh, maybe it's changing too, because these are the beers are not really into. I mean, the press are not really into beers. Uh, they they want to talk about wine, or they usually always compare beer to wine. It's either one uh, or the other. It's never why not both. Uh, they just say. Also, are you beer or are you into wine? And that, that's a big mistake to, uh, for, for me, I'd say, because uh, well, I can enjoy good things, <laughs> beer or wine or, I don't know, anything, uh, good milk for whatever reason. Um, and now the distribution, that's a big, 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 big deal. <laughs> uh, and that's, uh, I think, the, the biggest problem here in France uh, it's the fact that there's uh, what we call the contrat brasseur, the brewer contracts uh, or something, uh, where there's distributors, huge ones, that, are, that give money in exchange for monopoly. So they have their own beers, and that's why you always have like Heineken or Cronenbourg, uh, not the same at the same time in a bar, because uh, this is two different distributors. and one bar that can that have this contract with one distributor uh, won't be able to to serve any other type of beer, uh, which is lame because uh, those beers are definitely not the best one. Uh, brewers are don't re don't really care what they're doing. It's industrial, and uh, the more they make money, the more they, the, the happier they are. Um, well, happier, I don't know, but. Uh, and so really nice brewers uh, and breweries that are growing up 
right now can't really uh, afford to be, I mean, not even afford, can be in those bar, can't really uh, be, uh, well, customers can have them. They are really, they, they, they only have the option to have those crappy beer instead of craft beer. Uh, so distribution is a, is a really big, big, big problem. Uh, because just of this money, p people, I mean, when you want to open a bar, uh, you, you need money, of course. Um, and because of that, distributors make their money and, and everything. And well, I think um, I've I'd said enough. <laughs> if I may, I might like to, uh, to redirect that question to Brasserie Duc. Um, because uh, I wonder you're a, a lot larger than the other breweries that we've introduced here. Um, and uh, you're in that big beer market in a way. So how do you compete with that? Do you have to apply the same methods, buying yourselves into bars and restaurants? I think, you know, as, as a larger uh, uh, Duick brewery is, uh, it's much closer to your reality than the reality of Lef, all these big industrial guys. So we are in that case in exactly in the same boat. And uh, what uh, Mathieu was saying in that he thinks it's the, uh, the only way forward if we really want to have diversities now in, in, uh, in French cafes and bars is to lobby against what we call the contrabrasseur, you know, this famous, uh, I don't know, to trend, let's call it a uh, industrial contract. So in other words, these people, as it was said earlier, they literally buy out the distribution. And not only they sell beer, but they buy the, the, the you know the setting, the uh, sometimes the furniture, and and then people are bound to to buy the, the same beer forever. So we really think that there is a battle to you know to get into right now, to to fight against uh, you know the industrial uh, monopoly, and which uh, no matter how big you are in the world of the small, you can never compete with these guys. It's impossible. So how do you hold against it? In fact, I'm in uh, both uh, sides of the thing because uh, I'm working at the brewery and I'm also working at the bar. And the first, uh, when we opened Les Trois Huit, the small bistro uh, five years ago, it was exactly the topic. I didn't want to get any beer from industrial and any, be any, any contract at all. So. Uh, we uh, we began to find new craft beer in France, and we have been to first to to their place, to their brewery, and pick up the beer. It's how we began. So we pick up the beer in a truck and bringing back to Paris and served in, served it at our bar. So now it's more structured. You have like independent uh, uh, distributor, independent breweries distributors for the brewery. Uh, we uh, decided at the beginning to distribute the beer uh, through the one of the independent brewery distributor, which is called DBI in France, which is bigger and bigger now. He's only distributing independent breweries, but it's still really small compared to big, uh, big industrial uh, distributors. But more and more, we realized that the best way to do and a lot of brewing and doing that is to integrate the distribution. So now uh, for two months now, we are uh, taking orders from bars and, and sellers and delivering by ourselves, it's a lot of job, but step by step, we could uh, have a guy delivering our beers. More sure, it's more like local uh, places in Paris but we think that it's a good, uh, the good way to do because uh, in the bigger market, like in the US, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of breweries, a lot of craft beer breweries has, integra has, had, has integrated the, the distribution. And though we think it's quite, it's one way to do. And a lot of, and we keep anyway the distributors, we keep our distributors. And if he wants to, to distribute our beer, he can do it. But effective, the, the most important thing is to be independent, so not to, um, to give our beer to uh, those distributors, which are like, uh, related to industrial beers and tend to, 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 uh, to have a special commercial way to, to, to sell beer. 
just one quick word. Uh, it is for us super important as well to to still have a, a connection with the brewers. So. Hello. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, as I said, uh, it's important for us to have connection with the brewers, to know what's happening with their brewery, if they have difficulties, if uh, uh, well, and new recipes maybe, uh, and just you know having a, a really nice hug. I mean, that's really important for us to to be part of the the, uh, the communication and distribute as much as we can do. We. we tend not to have any distributors between us and, and the breweries since uh, yeah we, we, we know the brewers we can have their their address I mean well, it's not stalking and on, on anything but uh, we really like and enjoy to, to visit their breweries we, we want to be friendly with them and to tell them how the beers are setting and how we like their beers or not maybe. Uh, so yeah, it is. Uh, it, distribution is really nice in some point, but having a direct contact is uh, is super important. Um, we're getting close to the end, so maybe uh, yeah, a closing no, statement just, from you. Just quickly said, what uh, from the Duik point of view, what uh, we are hoping is that uh, independent uh, brewers and not like like your based on your inspiration that independent brewers get together and try to reinvent distribution. The, you know, put together a distribution platform that would allow to have both what you're looking for, which is like direct contact, but also, you know, diversity accessible to, uh, to you know, interested uh, bistro that want quality. Um, uh, we didn't get through all of the beers that we wanted to try. Um, if you would like to still try them, we have some killer beers uh, that have been barrel aged from Italy as well as from France. Um, they will be available at Matthew's stand just on the other side of this wall. Right, Matthew? <laughs> so uh, if you want to try those high caliber, high alcohol beers, um, just ask Matthew. Okay, otherwise, um, thank you guys for coming by. Thanks for uh, talking. And uh, yeah, have fun at the rest of Bar Convent. Thank you very much to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.